Good morning, this is Rascal Apiary, and let's talk about thermal imaging today. We've, uh, we've taken a course here on thermal imaging. Um, I'll just preface it, it's both a lecture that we went to, and then we took a class online that just went over the basics on how thermal imaging works, and we'll talk about that with our beehives. I'm not saying that we're an expert. I'm not saying that anything I tell you today is going to help you and your hives. However, it is worthwhile to know a little bit about how bees create heat during the winter. Right now it is 42 degrees outside. Uh, I know that because as I was exiting my back porch, I got a temperature gauge right there. Well, thermometer. But here... I'll tell you what the thermal imaging says, and we'll add two of them. But right now you can see sun's rising, it's hitting off our, our hive boxes, and we got 60, we'll go with 65 as kind of average. Um, the platform is at 30, and that's 30 in the shade. Now if we bring the dot down here, we have... 65 ish about the same as the hive box so keep in mind when you're using your thermal imaging wherever the sun's reflecting off of that's really the temperature that it's taking now is that the temperature inside the box no we're getting the reflected heat off of the box so it's all based off of light reflection so you just have to keep that in mind we're not saying inside our box is 50 to 60 degrees what we are saying is that there is heat reflecting off the box. Now, this is the side with the sun. We'll walk to the other side. And let's say this box in the middle. You can tell that we use metal on our top lids because you can see it reflecting a little bit. And on the back of the hive it says 42. Now what I'm looking for is a spot like so where the sun is hitting off the hive or excuse me where the sun is not hitting off the hive this is a side of the box um, and the sun's on the other side is what I'm saying and you can still see heat coming through so that is a good sign it's warmer than the outside temperature And so that, just based off of that, tells me my bees are alive, there's heat in there. Okay? That's, that's my first sign that things are going well. Okay? So, this is a double brood box. It's a little bit harder to tell because the heat is spread out, but you can tell they are not in the back of this box. Not on the bottom. But towards the top it gets warmer, which heat rises, if we remember that. So that means there's definitely something in that box. And this is just testing to see, hey, are the bees alive or are we, are we just having empty boxes out here? And this is a good, good depiction of where the sun's hitting the front and it's warmer and towards the back of the hive. It's cooler. Now, knowing this, we can guess that if the sun's hitting off the front of the hive most of the bees are going to be towards the front they're not going to be at the back of the hive even if their stores are back there they're going to move to the front for the warmth um, and if it was later in the day you'd even on a day of like today which is 42 right now probably 55 middle of the day uh, the bees are going to fly um, there's actually you can see one crawling right there and just fly away so they're gonna be they're gonna be flying just got pinged off my head from that bee that you can see uh, so they're gonna be flying on different days not today but on another day I'll set up my tripod and I'll keep this FLIR camera up and you can see where the Sun moves off this side of the box and goes to the other side the left side here where I'm trying to point the dot 
and you'll still see residual heat towards the front and that's still the cluster just hanging out at the front because it's still warm as the side warms up and when I leave my tripod out and I leave it on uh, hyperlapse which is just going to be the it's just going to be the the picture every minute and you'll see just like the old highway pictures where you have the hive here and you see it move to the other side and it's pretty cool to see but today we won't be doing that I'm just checking it's warm enough to where I'll walk out later and I'll just see the the bees flying there's no point in having the flare out today but yep yeah, it's it's a pretty cool little device and just remember if uh, if you have one to recalibrate it every now and then sometimes it gives you gives you some false readings just because it's it's reading the Sun more than it's reading the hive box uh, if you stand real close to the hive box you're not really gonna get a whole lot extra either it's it's based off a of Sun reflection um, yeah That's, so we're standing real close to it and you can you can see some heat but you want to see you want to see the light reflecting and then you want to see that residual see how I move here and the colors are changing that's just based off of light reflecting so no light reflecting there makes it look a lot colder a little bit of light reflect in there and I think it's just because the angle of the lens so you can get some false readings you don't want to get that false hope going yep yeah. so later on I'll probably take a a short film of the bees flying in and out so you can see uh, it's pretty cool it looks like almost looks like uh, meteors like a meteor shower but they're all just going into the hives anyway if you end up getting this uh, we have the FLIR 1 it just attaches to your cell phone so it makes it super simple and uh, the version I got comes with an extendable battery so you don't run out of battery before you're done recording. Right now, I, I started out at 100, and within seven minutes, I'm at 77%. So, but it's a cool little tool. Definitely helps on snowy days. There's a lot of reflection, uh, but you can calibrate it using one button. It just auto calibrates. You set it up where you want it, hit the calibrate, and it will it will try and use its system. It's software to uh, get rid of that extra ref refraction, kind of like you're seeing over there off the grass, because the grass is wet today. So all that sun's reflecting coming over this way. Anyway, hope this helps you or gives you some ideas on what you might be doing. We uh, we went to a lecture and he he sold the device pretty good. Uh, it wasn't towards beehives, but I was sitting there going, "Oh, there goes my chicken." I was sitting there going, man, he's able to see items in the wall. I should be able to see items in my hives. Now, that being said, this is an excellent tool if you're trying to do cutouts. Um, that would be bees have now taken up inside a, a house in the walls. Uh, they typically do it next to electrical lines. <laughs> And you're trying to figure out where to cut exactly instead of playing that guessing game of our bees behind this part of the wall You can just use this and inside a house They're clear as day So it's definitely worth it um, If you have people that are paying you to do the cutouts then do a cutout pay for this the rest of your cutouts will look a lot more professional than just beating on the wall trying to figure out where the bees are All right. Have a good day everybody